Welcome in hockey fans, you're listening to the Berkshire Battalion Signal Corps, the weekly podcast covering the world of the FHL's Berkshire Battalion, the hometown team in North Adam, Massachusetts. Al Kessler here with you, I'm joined by our PA announcer, Ross Jacobs. A, How are you doing, Al? It's, I'm doing well, I'm uh, down here in Connecticut today, it's an absolutely balmy, chilly day, I can't even imagine what it's like up in North Adams today. It is snowing. It's snowing? Oh wow. Oh, yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm at least happy there, it's uh, clear skies down here in, in Connecticut, so... At least I'm happy. We're going to be covering the weekend that was and the weekend to come for the troops of the Berkshire Battalion. A disappointing weekend to say the least. A Saturday-Sunday home doubleheader against the Watertown Wolves. It That resulted in 14 goals for the Wolves, only 3 goals for the Battalion. A very disappointing weekend. What were your thoughts from the, the Saturday game, Ross? Well, you know, when you get down early quick, uh, you play catch-up and you start making more and more mistakes, and it builds on itself, and pretty soon it, it, it's, just, it's just down and, and over early. And uh, not only the Saturday game was like that, the Sunday game was like that too. Three goals in the first uh, six minutes and 16 seconds is what that was, right, on Saturday. Yep. And, uh, you know, you felt bad uh, the, the, for Louis. Um, you felt bad for the whole team. <clears throat> I, they, they came up with a much better effort during the second period, uh, but let in a shorthanded goal then as well, and before you knew it, it was just it, w- it was all over and done with. And five to one is the final score on Friday. I mean on Saturday, and <clears throat> you know there was a couple of things that struck me about that game uh, on, on defense, especially. I have some notes here that I, I, I saw that um, a couple things about that: the uh, clearing out of the zone they were having. I think some trouble getting the getting uh, getting out of their own zone, mm-hmm. uh, either rushing or just even getting the puck out. Uh, they they made that Watertown defense look like an iron bar across their own blue line. Uh, Louis was fighting the puck early on in his tender uh, in his tenure. You could see he was just bouncing right off his shoulder. Things that he would normally in some other games you've seen him just smother and, and get the whistle was bouncing right off him. Um, yeah, for sure. The, the definitely the the quick offense and uh, especially the quick forechecking of the Watertown Wolves. They, they were definitely a bigger team, especially on Sunday when they got some of their big bruisers back off of suspension. Yeah. But uh, definitely that forecheck there. But a positive for the battalion, one of their best lines this weekend, actually the line that uh, was responsible for all three goals, that line of uh, Dolman, Guerrera, and Alan Martin, they were yeah. fantastic. Dolman getting the only goal of the game on uh, Saturday and then on Sunday with a goal and an assist uh, in the 9-2 to loss uh, on Sunday. Yeah, it was a, a, a topic of conversation we were having uh, amongst our side of the rink. That this was Dolman's best weekend of the year. Uh, he looked strong on the puck. He had finish. Um, you know, I, I think a couple of the other lines were getting some of their shots in, especially on Sunday, but the finish wasn't there. Um, and that could be either because of the the quality goaltending of the Watertown Bridge table. They, hey, listen, they are a really good team. Yeah, there, there's a reason they're the best team in the league currently. Exactly, but uh, you know the the, the Dolman uh, line uh, with the pr- two brand new guys, Martin and, and Guerrera. Yeah, both. Uh, you know, that's th- um, looking good for those guys. I think if they can keep that up. Yeah, definitely a very impressive line. I, I honestly expect more production out of Dolman. I really like his game, uh, despite the fact that he is a big guy. I think actually currently with uh, some of the subs- or the uh, waves, waiver moves that the team has made, which we'll get to in a second, uh, Dolman's probably the biggest guy on the team, uh, but he's got some very soft hands for, for a man that size, and he's very good at reading the play especially well. Yeah, uh, and he's tough. Yeah. And he's tough, and that's, I, I think, some of the things that – you know, when, when I when I talked to Coach Farrell um, a couple of times over the weekend, you know, it's not easy to talk to a coach after he's just lost big twice. Um, and obviously he's going to say a couple of things that aren't really worthy to be repeated in a form like this. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, you take a look at it, and uh, I think both he and some of the other observers here are, are worried about sometimes the, the, the team as a whole getting their noses dirty, sticking their faces in there, being tough. Yeah, I think it is is a, a layman's way to put it. They, obviously, they're all pro hockey players. There's, you know, not a one of them I would, you know, want to go toe to toe personally against. But you know, when you're dealing with uh, a bigger team with more, probably more, with, with definitely a lot more experience, mm-hmm. as you'll see out of the Watertown and the Danburys and and the Daytons of the league, uh, 
Yeah. You've got to get them off their game, and you've got to do that by, you know, putting a shoulder to the mush uh, when you got to, you know? Yeah, speaking and, and of... I don't think, you know, I saw a lot of opportunities where, um, you know, maybe there was like a, a shot for a cute hip check maybe, where especially uh, on the uh, on the offensive zone, uh, you know, during the four check, uh, the, I mean, the, well, the other team's offensive zone, during the four check where... There were really some good opportunities to, you know, staple an opposing player to the boards and knock them off a puck, and they slip right past sometimes. Uh, you, know, they, 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 you notice these things, yeah. Uh, when it's, you're when when someone calls them to your attention, especially for a, a young team like this uh, without a lot of pro experience, it's definitely tough. Uh, especially with some of the European players uh, who really are not a. Uh, acclimatized to the hitting, especially at a, a minor league level here in the States and especially in Canada. A uh, perfect example of that is, is Lester Brown, the Dutch forward who went down with an injury uh, after laying a body. Um, he went in with a hip check and ended up hurting himself on the play. Uh, but talking about the goaltending on Saturday, it was uh, Jocelyn St. Pierre, who's been in the league about three, four years, uh, as I recall off the top of my head. Uh, he was phenomenal in that 41 uh, shots faced. He made 40 saves. Uh, Louis George, as you said, uh, had a bit of a rough start uh, Three saves on six shots in six minutes and 16 of play. Uh, his replacement, Palmquist, did very well, though, uh, stopping 37 of 39. Yeah, it was a good performance from there on out. It was close all the way. It was tight. Uh, that shorty was the one that ended up making the difference in the second period, and that was uh, a, a sick play. Yeah. That was just that was some goal. I think everybody yeah, was... who saw it commented on it. That Watertown's uh, Chad Bennett, 13 minutes into the second period, while the uh, Wolves were shorthanded. Uh, as a result of, uh, I believe, let me check here, the uh, box score. I believe it was a... Uh, that was uh, the... Somebody's penalty. That was the uh, hook yeah. on Arve, I think. Yes, it was. As, um, yeah, Bennett just flipped the puck end over end over the top of Palmqvist. And uh, that was that was all. Um, very tough one. Let's move on to the game Sunday, however. Uh the Wolves winning 9-2 to two in Berkshire. Another quick start, uh, Colby Spooner scoring two minutes in. It would be uh, three goals for the Wolves in the first period, uh, oh. but Alan Martin would respond late in the first period, though, for the battalion, uh, assist to Michael Dolman. Right. Oh, so just to go back, I, I yeah. found it on my sheet. Uh, Al, that's, uh, that was a rough on Unak. Okay. <laughs> it, it wasn't on the it wasn't on the box score for some reason. Yeah, no, I, I have it on my sheet. That at uh, twelve uh, twelve oh six mm-hmm. was a rough on Una. Oh no, that's not true either. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll As, find out. Uh, it, uh, to some point, it doesn't really matter. It was it was a a, a great uh, it was a great shorthanded goal and tremendous individual effort by uh, Chad Bennett of Watertown. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, let's talk about uh, we were talking about him before, but let's talk a little bit more about Mike Dolman and his game on uh, Sunday. Yeah, Gordy Howe hat trick for Dolman. He had an assist on the first Berkshire goal. He scored the second one. Uh, on a rebound chance, there was a great shot as uh, Matt Hamilton came in on a two-on-one rush, fired the shot off of uh, uh, Jesse Chenard's pads, and it was uh, Dolman crashing that to put it home. He would later on uh, fight in the third period as he would fight uh, yes, Zach he would. Hale, at, actually. At the very end yeah. of the third period, a boarding penalty which led to a fight with uh, Zach Hale yeah. of Watertown. And, uh, his second fight of the weekend as well. It was a good fight, well. too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, his his second for for not having fought uh, coming out of uh, a New Jersey product, he went to uh, Don Bosco Prep, uh, played college hockey in the in the states at a Division three level. Definitely not a fighter uh, is Dolman, but he's he's a big body and he definitely knows how to wrestle and, and keep himself safe at the very least. Uh, but Dolman, two fights on the weekend, he fought Chris McCarthy and Zach Hale uh, for the Gordy Howe hat trick. Yep. Uh, but all in all, just a rough weekend for the Battalion. Palmquist was pulled uh, after five goals. Uh, 15 shots he faced, made 10 saves. Louis George coming in in relief, uh, 20 saves on 24 shots. Yeah. Whereas the battalion throwing 39 pucks on that, only two found their way, and so 37 saves for Chenard as he, he played well, uh, showing he's he's a very able backup. He did, didn't he? And uh, I, I was uh, expecting that that Sunday game would be a little bit different because, you know, that 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 performance by St. Pierre was, it was terrific. He, he had a really great game on Saturday, and I figured if they had a shot, they had a shot against the backup goaltender. Yeah. Because I, I think I said before, the finish for some of these guys, uh, it's something that you know, you'd like to see 
you'd like to see them finish. I mean, that's true with any hockey player at any yeah. level, though, isn't it? So, Absolutely. Um, but you really want to see it get him get him past some of these guys standing in that. On the other side of the ice, uh, Justin McDonald, the leading point scorer in the Federal Hockey League, he had a hat trick Sunday night. Uh, that puts him in tops for scoring in the league. He's got 24 points, 13 goals, 11 assists, and only 10 games played. He is a fantastic talent. Yeah. D- didn't we mention that last week's podcast? Yeah. You know, that the pace that this guy was on, and it's like, how do you even stop him? And the answer is, well, you know, you, you don't. Yeah. He just... He was just tearing the. He was tearing out there. He was just going nuts. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the a lot bad of guys news on that team were going nuts. Fourteen goals, two games. That's a lot of a lot of pluses on that score sheet. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about some of the recent moves that the battalion have made coming into this three-game road trip. As uh, looking at the waiver wire, two players waived by the Berkshire Battalion: Jason Alera, David Arve, both defensemen, as they've been waived from the team. I'm getting word from some sources within the team that their replacements will be coming in. Uh, Andrew Dads will be returning to the lineup, the uh, defenseman, uh, along with a newcomer who is actually at training camp uh, but has been waiting for his immigration to, ke- uh, to clear, the Russian Kirill Frolov, uh, who is also a defenseman. However, one thing to uh, be noted, uh, the loss of the size of Arve will be substantial as neither Dadzi or Frolov are, are very big. Defenseman. Yeah, it, it is going to be uh, a shame. Um, Alera was a little guy. Uh, I thought he actually had a good game on Sunday. Uh, I don't think he played a lot. He didn't play on Saturday at all. He would think he was still coming. But he was still injured. But Arve, you know, you couldn't help but like him. He worked hard. But the numbers again, they don't lie there. He was minus three on Saturday and minus four on Sunday. And a lot and of penalties just, as well. You can't. You just can't have that. Yeah, absolutely. As. Uh, Arve also, I noticed, did take a lot of penalties, um, which was something that was uh, is never a good thing, uh, especially considering he wouldn't fight. He ended uh, his his career with the battalion with uh, 18 penalty minutes. Uh, he had three assists in six or in nine games played. Yeah, uh, and eleven they games. Were weird penalties me. too. You saw them. I mean, you see, you go down the score sheet, you hooks and slashes. Yeah, holdings. Little, you know, little pesky stuff, and uh, something which uh, which uh, a defenseman of that size really should not. Yeah, be taking those kind of penalties. Smart penalties. You yeah, know, they're, they're not they're, they're not penalties that are getting people off the puck. They're not penalties that are interfering with scoring chances, and you know those aren't the kind of things you like to see. So you know it is it goes back to I think what a lot of these people are discovering. A lot of the players are discovering about playing in this league where you dress seventeen guys mm-hmm. for a team, and there's comings and goings and goings and comings a lot where you have. Your high school team, that's your high school team. Yeah. You know, that's a pretty solid roster. College, same way. Juniors, same way. Travel teams for, you know, your, your youth hockey organizations, the same thing. But when you get to this level at the pros, where, you're, where your season is fast, people get injured, and there's call-ups, and there's send-downs, you Tremendous, never know who yeah. you're going to be playing on a line with. Yeah, tremendous turnover in this league. Yeah, and not only that, from game to game, and I, this, I think this is uh, coach's strategy, is to try to make it so that these guys are going to be able to gel with anybody on the roster, no matter who they're playing with or even what position they're playing. We saw Lisco play defense mm-hmm. all, almost all weekend. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think that is something that the guys who have only been together for seven weeks, maybe eight weeks, are still getting used to. Yeah, for sure. And especially and, with new know, players coming in as well. Right. So it's tough, on, and it looks you know, like the defense is, is not immune to that either when you don't have a regular defensive partner. I mean, when you've got losses like you know, when, when Mo went down and Dadsy went down, and you know, you're losing these people, and the new ones come in, and you're moving around from defensive pairings and forward lines. It gets confusing, and you, know, you can see that it's going to take a little time. And you can see how the more experienced teams in the league are dealing with that a lot better. Yeah. Some, uh, some good news on a side note, though, for fans, as uh, I've been recently talking with Matt Stopa of uh, Hockey Fights, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing that name wrong, uh, Matt Stopa of HockeyFights.com, who covers the Federal Hockey League uh, for the website. Uh, I'm going to be submitting all of the fight footage from the games for uh, Tristan's fights and Dolman's fights and even uh, Guskov's fight against Corey Evelyn, which was a, yeah, was a doozy. Yeah, it was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very good. Center <laughs> ice, helmets off. As uh, So fans will be able to view some of the uh, FHLs and some of the uh, Berkshire Battalion fights on uh, HockeyFights.com, which will be really nice. Um, really like that we're going to be working closely with them as well. But a tough road trip coming up. 
They've got a Friday game in Watertown, a Saturday game in Dayton, and a Sunday game in Danville. Uh, That's brutal, rough. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Absolutely brutal. I, I've made that road trip before um, with the uh, Danbury Whalers. It's absolutely brutal. It's oh, just, yeah. it's tough. It's real it's tough to be. go out, just and especially with three games in three days. A lot of hours. You knew it. Well, you knew it when you saw. Well, when I saw, and, and you've been along, you've been involved with the league a lot longer than I have been. But I think you go back to the story that the Berlin, New Hampshire team was going to come in first, mm-hmm. and the bus ride. Can you imagine? Berlin is way up by the Canadian border. Oh yeah, uh, it's all the way down to to Danville, Illinois. That just has to be nuts. But even when you when you saw you know the, the other teams in the league going out to us down in Pittsburgh and Dayton, I, mm-hmm. I knew these guys were going to be like, well. Get yourself a little portable DVD player and a deck of cards because you are going to be on that bus, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy a long... the hot breakfast at the at the Holiday Inn there because that's what your life is going to be like on those road trips. Yeah, that's a that's a very tough road trip. But something I think that might actually end up being a little bit positive for this team, especially with maybe some new players coming in as well. Uh, you know, being cooped up in the same bus together for a long time, having to battle through that three game weekend, uh, which is going to be very very tough. It, we could see a very different Berkshire team coming back as. Uh, to be honest, looking forward to this, uh, playing the two top teams in the league, Dayton and uh, Watertown, uh, two days in a row, that's going to be very tough. It's going to be very, very tough for a team that's still in a, a building phase. I mean, you can't say rebuilding because it's a brand new team, uh, but still definitely building practically from the ground up. However, one nice thing is that that Sunday game in Danville, uh, Danville's a team that Berkshire has played very, very well. Hopefully they can get a win out there in uh, the David S. Palmer Arena out there in Danville, Illinois. Yeah, you can't put a win past them in the other games either. I mean, you saw that they, these guys can take sustained uh, periods of time and make it work. Mm-hmm. Uh, they haven't put together a full 60 against the Watertowns and Danbury's of the league yet. They haven't played Dayton at all. Have they played uh, Dayton on the road yet? No, they have not played Dayton yeah, yet. Dayton's, played Dayton the, Dayton's yet. the one team. Yeah. And they, they can do it. You saw it during the second period um, on Sunday, I mean on Saturday, you know, there are they they can hang with these dudes to an extent. It's just a question of for how long mm-hmm. before you know they just start. It, all it ta- you know how it is with hockey is yeah. one pass, one bounce is all it takes, and and it is not just luck out there. Yeah, the next home game uh, for the uh, Berkshire Battalion will be coming on. Uh, let me check the schedule 29th. here. Yeah, the twenty ninth. As uh, Steel City will come into town to play the yeah. battalion, uh, so a one home game, a one game weekend there. That's going to be a nice respite uh, there at the end of November, um, and then after that, it's uh, a road trip, or excuse me, a home against Danbury, and then a road trip to Danbury, uh, two days in a row, Friday and Saturday. Uh, that should be fun, a nice home and home there. Uh, yep. Always fun. Uh, maybe, hopefully, some of the fans can try and make their way down. Uh, Danbury's only about a two, two and a half hour drive. Uh, really nice rink. Uh, really yep, nice and, town. And, you know, not that far from New York City. You know, no. you catch a game, go into the city, make a weekend of it. Plus, uh, if, if any fans are planning on coming down, definitely contact me. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Al Kessler, uh, also on uh, Twitter, at CT Hockey. Uh, it's, I'm actually currently in Danbury now. This is where the, the podcast is being recorded. So I definitely I know the area, and I can show you guys the, the best place to go. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. Right, and by the same token, uh, if anybody uh, outside of the Berkshire area is listening to this podcast, I live here in North Adams. Uh, Northern Berkshire County is absolutely beautiful this time of year. You can get me on Twitter at, at Ross J underscore uh, or at Facebook. Uh, my name is Ross Jacobs. I, I don't know how many. There's some other ones, but uh, I'm I'm the one with the Bruins hat on, I believe, in the picture. So, Yeah, as uh, that should just about wrap it up here. We've got uh, a tough road trip coming up for the Berkshire Battalion, but then they'll come back home. As uh, I also do have have heard some rumors, uh, totally unconfirmed, uh, about some other players potentially coming in. Uh, no names as of yet, but there seems to be some excitement about the talent of some of these players coming in. So we could see a significantly different lineup for the battalion next time they're playing in the Peter W. Foot. Well, looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing it. And again, if you're also in the uh, Northern Berkshire community, the battalion is starting to make their way out and about in the community. Uh, yesterday, they were uh, reading to some elementary school students in, in uh, the mountain in Florida, Massachusetts. Uh, tonight, Tuesday, the um, 18th, they will be at the Greylock Bowl, Mount Greylock Bowl, uh, bowling with the kids. You can contact Heather Lane, uh, hlane at berkshirebattalion.com if your kids want to be involved in that. 
Um, there's uh, the kids club also in general uh, has some great events. Heather's doing a terrific mm-hmm. job working with the community on that. Yeah, and absolutely. And so you know, the, it's becoming. I, I think the attendance has been really good. The the uh, we had over 580 people uh, in, at the rink on Saturday, mm-hmm. and uh, I think they're really starting to get uh, a good uh, a good following here. And of course, you can't forget the Armory. Yeah, oh, gotta love the Armory. Gotta give you, we gotta you give you them a shout out. Every... The Armory. Uh, they are. Did you see? There was a great story on the FHL website about uh, Justin Levac, mm-hmm. and uh, he actually called out the Armory for uh, for getting him. For getting his attention, yeah, and no, they, they're they're great. Those guys over there, they're a great addition to the uh, to, to the to game night. Yeah, we always have to give them a shout out. Absolutely, really looking forward though to the upcoming weekend, and of course to the return to the home stand for the Berkshire Battalion. For Ross Jacobs, this has been Al Kessler. It's the Berkshire Battalion Signal Corps. We will be back next Tuesday, of course, bringing you the weekend that was and the weekend to come, as we'll have a lot to talk about after a three-game road trip. And uh, enjoy the weekend of hockey, everybody.